I, I, I love how you say it. The tragic submarine loss. As if, like, I have family members that died on the submarine. <laughs> like, like, I'm just mourning every day. I can barely get out of bed. Ah, oh, God, this submarine, dude. That's just... Oh, whoo. Oh. Like, like I said, sad situation. But at the end of the day, it's like kind of avoidable which i don't know if you've watched the interviews because I, I feel bad for the family members right uh -huh. you had um the wife of the billionaire and son and she was like oh or the aunt or whoever it is they're like oh man like there were no signs you know anybody this could have happened to anybody uh they were just going on a, a, a trip we saw all the safety measures it was fine and you know like no nobody could have predicted this and then we they cut over to a different interview with another billionaire and his son who didn't go, but were planning on going originally, mm -hmm. which is uh, they had the original tickets and then they 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 gave it up and then the new billionaire and son took over. Which is it's funny that it's father son father son. It was right. kind of like crazy. I thought they came back from the dead for a minute, but <laughs> it's it's wild because those guys had an entirely different perspective. They were like, oh, we saw this coming. Like <laughs> they're like, we gave up the seats because we saw that they had no safety features. The submarine looked raggedy. It, you know, like they were like going the complete opposite route of the aunt or mom who was talking beforehand, who said it was unavoidable. I was like, it, wow, it was that's wild. But I mean, then again, she's she's mourning, and of course, you know, nobody wants to think ill of the dead. So yeah. I, I understand why she would say it, but also I think it's just funny, like seeing the duality, right? Right, right. So as uh, as far as like what we're talking about, the Titan sub thing, and uh, we cover that. Uh, a lot in the last episode that's and the I only thing we people, covered last episode <laughs> yeah and uh i think a lot of people enjoyed our what well, not enjoyed the situation that's rough people uh, love that situation they ate it up yeah yeah you know what like in post like feeder. afterwards um i i think like you know we had the opportunity to hey let's do you want to just record while this like crazy viral thing is going on but we just stuck to our like normal weekly schedule which i just kind of like it's just easier for both of us but um uh it, it's in after that you know something i said in that video was like we're not gonna learn too much afterwards that kind of changes our understanding of it which you know good call we did learn a few new things uh some interesting developments but as far as like the overall situation nothing like super change but that the the father son thing i think i mentioned them last time but we didn't i didn't like have like all the details then or i forget if we talked about it afterwards but um uh th something that was interesting is it seems like both the sons in the situation were kind of apprehensive about the whole ordeal because this the first son that that was in the first duo he was the reason why they backed out apparently yeah. like they, they he was just like yo da like he's like so daddy yo this ain't looking good yeah because like stockton rush opened up like very confidently and this is the thing this is how most uh this is how most um i don't want to say cult but like this is cultish behavior in the way of uh like when a sus suspiciously not suspiciously a source of authority like like at the end of the day stockton rush is a princeton grad he's the aerospace engineer like he is a source of authority but he uses his disparity and knowledge to create like gospel and that's kind of like not gospel like like a like a cult like that's what most yeah people cults how they work right it's a disparity in knowledge and you use a veil of authority when something as as important as knowledge right knowledge is something that you constantly have to retest like it's not something you just have and then you're good for the you're certified for the rest of your life especially when it comes to the medical stuff especially comes in engineering too um and especially as a place like submarines like you can't just like there there's stuff that we know and sure there's innovation but there's like you know you can't i don't know there's just like some a lot of stuff there that is just kind of interesting and so the sun asked questions like treading in that realm of like you know he's younger he knows some things he read some things right like versus his dad who's just trusting and i think it between the controller and the questions that weren't being an a answered which is the carbon fiber thing i think was directly what he asked about yeah stopped and rush just kind of like was just like oh you don't know what you're talking about like that kind of thing and that's generally how those kind of cult things work 
And then my favorite part was uh, the dad got convinced by the son. Great. The Las Vegas financier billionaire guy got convinced by his son. They pull out. But it doesn't stop there. You would think, you would think like, hey, hey, can we get a refund on our tickets? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. No, sure. Everybody wants to go on this thing. I don't need you guys. Nope, 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 nope. Stockton Rush flew out to them in Las Vegas. And if that wasn't a red flag, because apparently I think the red, the son thought that was a red flag, but the dad thought it was a red flag because he's a rich person. And it was because of rich person knowledge that he smelled the, the red flag. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, what is it? So he smelled the red flag because of what airport Stockton Rush came into. He was just like, huh, this isn't the rich person airport. You could have came directly. Why did you go to that one? Like, if you're really like, like, because there's specific private airports that like all the rich people fly in. So they avoid the public. They avoid all these things. Um, but those airports, they don't allow like, um, like if you're a small experimental plane, they won't take you because you have to have certain like, you have to pay certain things and whatever. But so Stockton Rush flew in. His answer to him is like, oh, I didn't fly in there because I built my own plane and decided to fly to you guys. And so because of that, he like, so the dad asked him, was like, wait, why'd you do that? His answer was that. And then the dad is a certified pilot. So the dad was like, that's crazy. That is, that is beyond even I, I, because I have knowledge here. I know that's ridiculous. Why would you do that when there's just planes here? Like, why would you fly an experimental plane that you just built? And so he basically said the risk disparity between the two of them was just too much. And it took him having the knowledge to bridge the gap of mis mystery in order for him to figure out like, oh, this guy's we're a not maniac. Going this guy. Yeah, exactly. This so guy's that, an that's absolute lunatic. And that to me, like honestly, of like the meanings that you could pull from it, that was very important because you could see in their moments of why they hesitated, it was because of a knowledge diff. That's exactly what it was. And you see it in full action. The moment Stockton Rush treaded on territory that the, the client was knowledgeable about, he lost the deal. The minute he did that, that it was over. In the same light, the minute you went to a carbon fiber engineer, boom. The minute you went to a certified sub guy, a person with experience, boom, not hired, fired, out of here. Safety regulations, out, fired. That's the thing. You see that across the board with Stockton Rush, he always got rid of uh, um, like leaders in knowledge. Because leaders, he... knowledge, and safety. The man was allergic, bro. Yeah. <laughs> He allergic is crazy. But yeah, <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was allergic to common sense and safety and yeah. criticism. And like, I get it. Like, the thing is, the thing is, again, we talked about this last time. Innovation is one thing where it's like Tesla, Edison, they all went through crazy trials and tribulations to get to where they got to in terms of the, whatever they did. You know, most people just say, what's wrong with the lamp? What's wrong with oil? What's wrong with coal? Right? No, you know, like and innovation comes with its risks, but like we were able to make a nuclear bomb without like failing. You know what I mean? Like that's a really yeah. risky thing. And like, you know what I mean? Like there's there's ways to get to innovation and there's corners that you don't cut and you know um we by this point in history we figured out most of them that you could say by skirting most regulations you are uh reckless and endangering right because at the end of the day i like my favorite take was like not favorite take obviously there's no favorite takes here but it's like damn bro like you could have just had this remote control set up like done this trip a hundred times and if there was no failures who's gonna doubt you you didn't need to put your life on the line for this right like that like there's so many ways he could have proved himself without him going on the maiden voyage without him going on just remote just drop lift drop lift dro that's literally it like the ease not the easiest testing but you know I what i mean it's like better that stockton rush died in the sub because even if he survived, like, bro, the guy's going straight to jail, right? Like, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, either way, he was this. done. Like, like the thing is, uh, here's the difference, right? I'm selling you a ticket to 
the Titanic on my shoebox of a sub, right? You were you're trying to sell me last time. I got you this time, right? Um, so hey, side, do you want to go on my experimental no. sub? I've never went on it before. Okay, see, uh, immediately no. Okay, now <laughs> I didn't even let you finish the sentence. I just hit you with the no sub. No, I'm done. Hey, oh. Sai, look at this crazy sub. Look at m m hours, thousands of hours of footage of it going down and up, down and up. Look at all the certifications that it has. Oh, look, it's regulated. Now, do you want to go on this sub with me, Sai? No, it's probably too small. not. I'm, I'm still not yeah, a fan of subs. Probably because I don't want to shit in front of you, right? Like, yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, it. dude, I, let me tell you, man, I got like IBS. I poop at least three or four times a day. If we yeah, go on I that know. sub, you are going to be. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be a torture chamber. It's gonna be like I'm gassing you up in there, bro. Like it, no life form is gonna survive that sub trip. It's gonna come up. I'm not even gonna be alive. We're, yeah. we're, we're gonna come up looking like Stephen Hawking, bro. Like it's gonna be GG. Oh my god. <laughs> not the cross inside joke from our other recording. Uh, everyone here is gonna be like, wait, what? Stephen Hawking? Stephen what is, Hawking? What is he talking here? about? Oh my god. Oh my god. But okay, so but at the end of the day, right? My point is like, he looked at regulations as a way to like they were deterrent to him, right? Yeah. Whereas you could use those regulations to as a that's how most places use regulations. You know how many supplements abuse FDA regulations and like the this uh, food and safety, all that stuff. They're just like, oh yeah, this is FDA, like you know, blah blah blah. And it's like, no, it's not. But that's because the regulations are so shot. I mean, not FDA, but like um, most supplements will say instead of FDA. FDA, they'll say like, uh, I forgot what it's CGC or something, CDC, so, not CDC, CDC, <laughs> CDP, I think, I think it's CDP, CGP, something like that, GCP, it might be that, where it's basically made in a facility that is regulated by the FDA, like the FDA does approve the facility, so it's not like some rat shop, right, it's not yeah. some dude, it's not coming out of place. a Chinese warehouse, you can say that, that's fine, um, you can say it too, Par, <laughs> say it with your chest, it's, I believe in you. Say it. Say I it. don't need to say. Why do I need to say it again? All right. The point is, Ying that, Ning. that's how Call most <laughs> places use regulations. They use it to bounce and leverage for selling points. Whereas Stockton Rush is like, regulations, they're just holding me back. I'm like, bro, you know, like, I feel like so many people have passed these regulations at this point. You could probably just pass them, like just find a way to pass them. Like, at least try to lie. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't even try. Yeah. He's just like, nah. Like, he, how different the conversation would have been if we found out, like, he passed all the regulations, but it was a scam. Like, he lied to all of them. Versus what we have now. It's like, bro, you didn't even try. You just went around it. Like, I'm glad oh at least somebody saw the lunacy in it, right? Like, the original billionaire and son. Like, they saw the lunacy and they said, we're not going on that. <laughs> yeah that's yeah, correct hamish harding's best friend also uh yeah i saw that guy that guy yo i don't know if you saw this interview that dude i'm pretty sure he's this is hamish harding's best friend who backed out he looked i think it was I, maybe he wasn't a billionaire i don't remember maybe he was like a multi-millionaire whatever he was beautiful he looked like king he looked like king from one piece oh no i didn't i didn't see them i didn't like look at them in the eyes but yeah so I I, look I, let now. me yeah, let me try to see Hamish Harding's best friend interview. Hamish like, Harding best friend. What yeah. what a thing to Google. I'm gonna have to explain this to my wife later. Let me see if I find this. I uh, wouldn't call him guy. beautiful. Oh wait, never mind. That's let just me... Hamish Harding. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pictures. <laughs> of, if, if if you Google Hamish Harding, it's just gonna pull up him. Yeah, I'm trying to find <laughs> this guy went up to Jeff Be with Jeff Bezos too. Like, I always wonder that, man. If you're a billionaire, I feel like you have to look beautiful, right? Like, you got to look good. I, I, we could segue into another fun story. But, because, uh, like, I, I don't know, man. Like, if I had money to blow and if I was a billionaire, I'd be buying, like, all the Korean skincare products. I'd be having a beautician showing up and rubbing my face with essential oils, peppermint canes. I don't know. Like, I, I have a witch in the corner crafting up some sage's brew to make me drink and stay young forever. Like, I'm going to find some eternal youth serum out there from a billionaire okay look at this guy victor vescovo victor vescovo look at the just the first google that is what victor i imagine vescovo. 
I wouldn't and say he, he's hand. Wait, okay, you built this dude up to sound like he's a, a handsome Jack. What is going on here? Yeah, okay, when he, he, was he on looks that okay, interview, he doesn't look bad for like an old guy, but I wouldn't say he's handsome. In the interview, he, I, the makeup artist, really, like these pictures, you know, on Google, they did not taking like the best videos, right, or pictures. But on the interview, I was like, damn, that's kind of good. You know you what I mean? Got a thing he for aged. old white men, don't you, Far? All I'm gonna say is he's he's what he's he's oh never mind no 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 never mind never mind I take it all back never mind How never old mind, is never he mind. no 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 don't look it up don't look it up no 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 I looked at his age never mind never mind I take it all back I take Ooh, it all back Ooh, that's in your I, range part fifty seven what do you mean in my range what do you mean <laughs> in <laughs> yo call up Victor Viscovo okay okay see okay I thought okay okay I'm What's gonna no no now I have to send you the picture now I have to send you this is what he looked like and I thought he was eighty five. Okay, <laughs> you thought okay. he was older. <laughs> I thought he was like 85. Look at this dude. Okay, I'm just gonna take a pic because I can't share my screen right oh, yeah. now. Yeah, can you explain uh... to people why you're wearing glasses right now? Oh, yeah, yeah, huh. Yeah. I mean, see this <laughs> he looks all right. He looks like he could play somebody in The Witcher. And his, his, yeah, yeah, and his eyes are like blue, blue in the thing. And so, like, <laughs> He looked, and then, like, he also is, like, in, he sounded smart, and he sounded kind, and he was, like, really great and well-spoken. Hey, I and... have my socks, and Par has Victor Viscovo. No, we, no, we, no, we, no, all, no, All men have okay. vices. Okay, 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 hey, he, if he was, <laughs> all men have he's, vices. you gotta, I did not look him up, okay, but, like, for 85. Yeah, you didn't look him up, he was already on your phone. <laughs> no, I, your hidden folder. I took a picture of my screen, you can literally see it on the thing, but, like, <laughs> <laughs> Go uh, on, go on. <laughs> yeah, this is the. If, if for, I thought he was like 85, I thought he looked really good for 85, and I was like, this is what a billionaire should look like. And I don't think he's a billionaire. That's one knock. But then two, <laughs> two, he's 57, and he looks off 57. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Like, if I put him like in my parents in the same room, my parents would look like his children. Like, that is crazy. So I'm Asian and yeah. since I do a lot of computer work, I feel like my eyes have deteriorated in the past year. I can kind of feel mm -hmm. the strain. So yeah. I'm I'm debating about whether or not I should get some some blue light glasses or some glasses to help me in general. Which yeah. I'm like, I don't know, man. Like I don't want to be like that squinty eyed Asian by the time I'm like 80. You know what I mean? You yeah, don't have that no. problem. Yeah, you won't have that problem, but I will. <laughs> like, I'm going to have to deal with that, right? Like, by the time I'm older, I'm going to have to worry about my eye bags. Like, if they sag a little bit too low, I'm not going to see anything, right? Yeah, yeah. As far as like, you know, and there's going to be a lot of people who's like, oh, that's all fake, whatever. It's not necessarily like the people that were pushing blue light, they... They were doing it with the right intentions with the wrong reasons and they were saying like too much the blue light from your screen isn't significant to strain your eyes but what is significant is your eyes looking at blue light period is enough to make you tired and so if you look at yellow light you're not going to get as tired from blue light and so like that's at the end of the day what it is like we do know that blue light uh stops melatonin uh, from or yeah stops melatonin from being triggered so that's what makes you tired right people take melatonin supplements but if you yeah. just stop looking at blue lights whether it's a white light blue screen your phone screen and you have the yellow filters which i have on all my devices then it'll make you less tired and then also the the strain that maybe that like there are some Things saying like your retina can be affected from my understanding at this moment it's like if you are excessively like very if you're close like how you're using a phone like how old people use their phone like this and you use it for like mad long like the amount of time that you and i are at a computer then it could make sense but like we're not like looking at our computer this closely right hey so speak for yourself and so the other the other route is uh, the other thing is that when you're uh you know when you're awake more blood flow goes to your eyes and so like if you kind of like relax it right because your eyes think that they're trying your your body thinks that you need a lot of stimulation there to look at a goddamn screen but you don't so then you lower it by looking at yellow light and then boom less stress less tired less fatigue all that jazz Dang. and so it does work i might have to cut me some soon you're gonna see me wearing blue like glasses every day yeah, most people who work like if they work remote, like they should just get them because it's like if you're at the computer and you have to look at it more than like 
four or five hours just do it just do it I, I think less than that it's like eh, especially if you spread it out like if you four hours five hours a day but you take like an hour break or something or like 30 minutes breaks in between i don't it's not super needed i doubt you're probably feeling it but hey you know i always i always use this analogy it's like one wave can't break a rock but like a thousand drops can make a dent and it's like that's kind of what this is it's like that's freaking profound <laughs> the wow. Confucius. Yeah, Confucius. Wow, <laughs> that was that was kind of crazy. I like that. No, that was, that was pretty solid. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah, so it's gonna take a toll, you know. And so, uh, you know what else is taking a toll on me right now? What? The grimace shake. Oh my god! I was gonna segue it right now too. Damn it, dude! The All grimace right. shake trend is hilarious. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So to give you guys context, if you don't live on the internet and TikTok and memes and stuff. The Grimace Shake is something being sold at McDonald's right now as promotion for Grimace's birthday. Uh, if you don't know who Grimace is, he's a very old school mascot for McDonald's. He's the purple monster thing. He kind of looks like a blob. He looks like Muck from Pokemon. And yeah, it's yeah. his birthday. So they have like this blueberry purple shake they're selling there with whipped cream. And I'm not going to lie, before the trend even started, I went to McDonald's and picked up a, a strawberry smoothie because it's it's cheap and it's actually pretty decent. Strawberry smoothies to McDonald's, nice. And every drink you get from McDonald's right now, cold drink, comes with a happy birthday Grimace cup. Uh -huh. And without even knowing about the trend or anything, I remember I, I turned to my wife and I was like, man, this is weird. I don't know. Th there was something about like the happy birthday Grimace that's on the cup that gave me a really weird vibe. And I, was like, I don't know what it is. Like, it's just menacing in a in, in like a strange way maybe it's the name grimace maybe it's because mcdonald's has never done this really but i got home and then you know days pass two three days later the grimace shake trend started popping up and i was actually i felt so justified i never had the grimace shake and i didn't even see it but i was yeah. like i'm glad this weird emotion that was provoked within me from <laughs> looking at that cup is a universal thing it's not just me who feels this way other people see the grimace shake and they're like or the grimace birthday and they're like wow this is like satanic maybe not satanic is like the wrong way to put it. it's like it gives you a weird feeling inside it was like yeah. oh like am i being possessed by a demon right now and that's kind of the where the trend is going where if you if you've seen it somebody drinks it they're like oh happy birthday grimace ha, ha. and then two seconds later they cut over and it's somebody like overdosing on grimace shakes in like the middle of a forest naked being hanged upside down uh being attacked by a monster like that is what the grimace shake trend is and i am curious to see your perspective on it and whether or not because i was debating this too i was like i was like man i wonder if the like not not hr like the pr team the marketing teams i wonder if they're getting praised or bashed because you, you know they're making hella cells mcdonald's in the news again it's trending yeah news outlets are picking this up tiktokers everybody's like talking about this now and it's like is mcdonald's happy with the outcome or do they not like the negative the, the negativity or do they like the money like I, it's such a weird balancing act because they can't so, keep this up yeah yeah you know that that's a good question because i when i saw the grimace shake thing one of my favorite tiktok creators at the moment he's just this dude who just gets angry about them like he just starts off like shouting in the tiktok and then yeah. like he just and then like you're like why is this man shouting let me listen and then as he goes on you're like oh no i'd be shouting too like no no this guy is like my spirit animal right now and like uh for like to to give uh context he was like shouting i don't know if you heard about this this quick tangent i-95 so it's like a major major highway from like new york to all the way down to dc it burned down like oh, in no. Pennsylvania. Yeah, the entire one side burned down. There's videos of people driving through. So a tanker, an oil tanker drove under it, got stuck, blew up, caught on fire, melted the bridge while it's hey, melting. That's people sick. drove through. There's a video of a 16 wheeler saying like you could see the, the, the bridge dipping. The 16 wheeler instead of slowing down, he had plenty. Of, he sped up and you see it just whoop. And then like the cars and then you see like in the back like they they turn the camera in the back and it's yeah. like a michael bay movie like explosions are going off and they're just driving by and everyone's like 
this is what I'm, this is what capitalism does. Like these people need to get to work. But by the way, it was Sunday when this happened, and they, they like they had no reason to like risk their lives like that. And luckily it was a Sunday because that is a major, major highway. The entire, both sides. So like basically eight lanes, but like a 12 lane width highway all shut down, right? And this guy's just angrily shouting about it. The governor invited him to the press conference from his TikTok. And then afterwards he got to meet Joe Biden because Joe Biden <laughs> flew in because he allocated like uh, federal money. <laughs> there was a new money. ice cream shop that opened up next door. It was crazy, right? So he he did this Grimmage shape thing. That's how I learned about it. And he's older than us. And he was talking about it as if like the Grimmage shake, like a like had this kind of like appeal back in the day. Like he was saying like like oh, we got you young people to drink the purple ooze. That's what this was all about. You guys forgot about the purple ooze, but back in my and I was like Am I too young? Like, this is crazy that Brother, he's like- it's, it's just a blueberry milkshake. <laughs> it, it, so he made it sound like back in the day, like 40 years ago, they brought out when Grimace was like introduced, that was Grimace's appeal, like to like, like, like put people in comas. I was like, what, what is this? But I, <laughs> back in I the day, with you. Grimace took many lives on the battlefield. Yeah. So many people like... tried to suck him off, but nobody survived. I was like, what? And then I saw videos of the Grimace Shake afterwards with like these like teenagers would just like would just buy it and then they would be all excited and then it just cuts and then they're just all passed out in like a playground with like ooze all over them. There was oh, one and, like, where twitching. like some girl was floating down a river, like menacingly into a sewer, like just coughing yeah. up Grimace Shake. There was another one which I this was the most riskiest one I've seen. The amount of trust this guy has in his friend group is insane. I would never do this. And uh -huh. I don't recommend anybody do this, but he drank the Grimace shake and then it cut over to him hanging like crucified on a bridge. And it's like, bro, it just takes like one faulty rope or somebody letting go to, to have this guy just absolutely die. <laughs> like that That's is some wild to be. The they Grimace had to have done nuts. before. Yeah, yeah. No, the Grimace, th that is weird. So as far as like what the McDonald's team is doing, uh, this is my take right now. Do you think they intended I'm, this? I've never... Did they do they celebrate Ronald McDonald's birthday? I think they, so. Like, cause I, we know Ronald like, anniversaries, but I don't know I'm if they celebrate sure, birthdays. I'm pretty sure Ronald McDonald's birthday is like right around Buggy's birthday, so the Clown Weekend, like Clown Week in like what August, September, or whatever. Um, which guys, if you August didn't know, 8th. there's there yeah national there's a national clown day in the U.S. and there's International Clown Week, I believe. And they're around and, the same time yeah 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 they they like the, the day is inside the week yeah and, it's like and the first or second week of august something like that yeah um so i will yeah exactly and so um like i don't why isn't that a thing why isn't the hamburglar a thing why there's so many other characters that i'm thinking like no they had to have known what they were doing here like what is the like yeah. i don't i i feel like it's a good thing but they're gonna have like the thing is when you look historically how many companies take a like the Tide Pod challenge, right? Like that didn't hurt Tide at all, right? Like they just put a warning, like don't eat. But like at the end of the day, it's like, yo. So like as far as like people crucifying themselves on a bridge, it's not like McDonald's is gonna take a hit and have to come out and say, guys, after you drink our drink, there's no hallucinogenics. Don't kill nothing. yourself. <laughs> yeah, like what are they gonna have to do? So like as far as it's a weird world, but I do think that they they hey maybe they did maybe they started it. Maybe they're like hey hey you guys let's, let's do this let's get this started right and then they put some money in promoting it, uh, getting it boosted up, uh, you know and it's it's a wild thing. And you know what I was going to bring up? There's a conspiracy theory that I saw, like a very, I, I don't remember the full scope of it, but they were saying that this is the same thing. Like the timeline is resetting. Like we're in a weird timeline. And they were saying that this is the par this year is a parallel of 2016 because we had like the Harlem shake, which is like the parallel to uh, the Grim Grimace shake. And I'm like, okay. And then there was another one. I think it related to the Russian war. And I'm like, wait, what? And then and then there was another one at the end of the year. They were like, oh, at the end of 2016, they were saying that there was the clone, in, not the clone, the clown invasion. Do you remember that? Where people were like just dressed yeah, up as clown. Yeah, there was that. like a clown pandemic. So now because of this theory, they're predicting that at the end of this year, there's going to be a Freddy pandemic. 
that there's going to be a bunch of Freddy Cougars is running around and terror terrorizing. That people. sounds like we need to get the guy checked into a mental hospital. <laughs> It was a bunch of people. People are like, oh my God. And I was like, but people are gullible. <laughs> what are you talking about? People are so it was stupidly a, gullible. I was just like, I was like, you know what? I'll believe. See, the thing is, I almost wish they didn't make the video because now that pe they made the video, now there's going to be a group of people like, oh, let's dress up as Freddy for the thing. Yeah. I would have, I would have believed they're, they're it more. They're bringing it to life. If we had this in hindsight, right? Freddy Cougar thing happened. And then in hindsight, someone connected those dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, all these dots. I'm like, you know what? That's a little crazy. Like, because the clown pandemic is kind of crazy or epidemic, right? Like a nationwide clown problem. That is kind of wild. That was national news. It was national news, but I think I think it was blown all, out of proportion only like, too. Yeah, it was it was super blown out of proportion because I think they only caught one clown and it was just like a actual clown profession professional or whatever yeah and we don't like know it, how it wasn't many even other like ones a were killer clown yeah the other like nobody died any staged, clowns like, during that i think like the only part of that that was like kind of scary was like that happened it was like happening in, even in like my town in my state like people were just dressed as a clown like in the middle of the road yeah and i was like wait that's kind of over here this is a safe place you know what i mean like new york city <laughs> Yeah, like over here, I think at the time, uh, yeah, yeah, it was in, we were in the city, or not, we were in New York, but um, yeah, like it's just all over, I mean, New York City makes sense, You, I mean, there's clowns all the time in New York City, so it's like, whatever, but then outside of New York, it's kind of like, whoa, keep it, keep the crazy in the crazy town, you know what I mean? You don't have to bring that shit over here, you know, we get the yeah. news about it anyways, but um, yeah, the Grimace Shake is wild, though. Are you going to go try it now? No. What if we? What if I we have, both so, try? There's it? so many other good shakes out there. I don't like blueberries either, so the grimace shake just doesn't seem too appealing to me. M yeah. Mine is like the meme of it. I, I feel like I wouldn't go out and grab a grimace shake. Should we do a review? No. Uh. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what we if could, we both we could, do it? But I don't know. And then we like on live. We we disprove it. Oh yeah, that would go viral, wouldn't it? Like di disproving the, the grimace. I don't think anybody actually thinks it kills people though. Hey, we would get a bunch of kids who are believable, believe in this stuff, right? Because, like, what was the pull for the Tide Pod? Why did kids want to do that? What, what was the... See, but the Tide Pod is, like, I, 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 I feel that one, too, because growing up as a kid, when I saw Tide Pod, I said, wow, that looks super tasty, but I also know that would kill me, so I'm not going to eat it. We didn't have the gel package when we were yeah, kids, Yeah, we did. Though. We did? Yeah. Wait, what? I remember the gel packets, like, when I was I remember a kid. that for dishwashers. I don't remember that for Maybe it was for machines. dishwashers, but... Yeah. In general, I do remember like tasty looking gel packages. And I was like, man, that's dope. Like I want to eat one of those, but I'm <laughs> Maybe not we did. going to. You know what? You know what? I I'll meet you in the middle. Uh, the dishwasher um, soap, there was this brand. It was like a square with the bl blue on the top, white on the bottom, but there was like a red circle in between. And sometimes that red circle fell out. And I loved Jawbreakers when I was a kid. Yeah. And I was, I, you know what? I, there was a few times where I'm like, let me just right? lick it. Yeah, let me just it lick resonates. it real quick. What does this taste like? But I never did it, right? Because obviously yeah. I'm not stupid, but like it, it did cross my mind. Maybe someone, uh, you know, if, with a little bit of peer pressure, with a little bit of virality sauce in the mix, maybe. Nobody maybe even I would have the Tide Pod it. challenge, too. I feel like all these yeah, challenges so. and like the, the fatality rate is always overblown. I think it was like 14 sick or something. Like yeah, this, I think nationwide. it was 14 or seven kids that actually got sick and then they, they survived. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of things, 14 is like a super small number. I know some people True. look at that and they're like, whoa, 14. It's like, bro, I looked it up. 1.8 people die per second in the world. Hey, uh, but, like, but on the, the flip span, side? In the span of this podcast part, in the, I think, 30-ish minutes we've been recording, bro, uh, thousands of people just passed away. Moment of silence for the people who hey, passed Hey, no way. Away. I'm not. <laughs> Moment of silence oh for the people God, that passed. Sai, come on. <laughs> that was the lowest, lowest hanging fruit to no, be a human being about? right there. And I just said, um, all we had to do was like one second, like one second on our time. And you were like, fuck that shit. And I'm like, what?
Hey, if, if it's one of us or a viewer or somebody we know of or somebody related to somebody that's watching this, then yeah, moment said, of silence. But if it's actually said, somebody I will never meet or never hear of, then it's like, it's sad, but I'm not going to like pause my day for this. Don't jinx this, Sai. Literally, like you literally also went don't believe millions in jinxing of people. Either. Okay, you said millions of people are passing away during this podcast. And I was just like, moment of silence for millions of people. Statistically, I don't know. But like at the same time, we could have just done one second. No, nah, statistically, right, there we go. more people died during this podcast than, than from the Tide Pod Challenge. Tide Pod Challenge, the Titan Sub, the clown bombings, clowns. Like, we. Okay, yeah. not bombings. Wait, wait, wait not bombings. Uh, so, right? Some bombings, some bombings. Actually, wait, uh, if we say millions, right? Like, that's. Wait, wait. Damn. I mean, millions of people didn't die in the span. Okay, so. What is it? 1.8 people per second. We're at 35 minutes. Can we do some math real quick? Yeah, let's do some math. Let's do some math. Quick I got maths. I got to know the 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 statistics here. How many people just yeah, passed yeah. away? So, so it's been 36 times, minutes. 36 so times 60. 2000 people just died approximately. If we're going by world oh, yeah, statistics, less than about bodies. about 2000 yeah. people just died in the span yeah. of this of you listening to this podcast. Basically less pe more people died in during this oh no that's not the way we're going i was gonna say let <laughs> you're gonna hate me for this <laughs> in like the last 20 years less people have died from sharks than from... <laughs> oh my god you're bringing it back to sharks again you son of a gun and depending on when this video comes out you'll you'll probably hear pars of long-winded shark stories and shark hey, facts I, there's more there's more to come more to come there's i got a physics teacher come. no not a physics teacher a marine biologist master's degree phd person in my uh viewership now for my theory channel for sharks well for <laughs> other things not just sharks <laughs> i like to imagine that's like the one person there they're like oh oh another kindred soul they love sharks yeah i i uh they they found it because they covered uh killer whales too and uh, did that, you but, uh, did you ever have those uh those shark tooth necklaces as a kid my wife got me one. Oh, i wasn't big it? on i it broke unfortunately Dang. i shark paraphernalia yeah, not, is cool yeah yeah i'm not a big accessory person but shark tooth teeth whatever would, is kind of cool would you ever illegally consume shark fin soup i wanted to a long time ago i did it i did a project on them when i was like in 10th grade and i was like at the time they were starting to be outlawed but there was like a lot of places but this at this point in time it's like it's too far gone and also now i found out that sharks are just wildly toxic so it's like it's yeah. not healthy to eat them but so. what, how about this let's say um somebody gives birth to an ugly baby and that baby wants to take you out for like a weekend barbecue would you <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this is another inside joke tie into a different video if you've watched it then you'll get it yeah. but you know a baby was born he's looking a little bit inbred and he wants you to go to a barbecue and he has shark fin soup on the menu would you go do we say this on the call or was this off call i can't remember uh <laughs> okay context to give everybody context here i was mentioning to the par that his baby looks pretty decent for a baby but <laughs> It's skewed because the babies that I have seen in my life all look like they, they, they come out of the womb looking like they want to take you to a garage sale. Like they look so old and decrepit for some reason. Like uh, I had a family member give birth uh, not too long ago. And when I saw a picture of their baby, I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's what our, that's our conversation. Because you saw I sent you a picture of the newborn when uh, when like the first week or second week, whatever. Yeah and this was the response everyone had they're like this is a newborn this is, baby yeah. looks like four months old already yeah some and babies come out scuffed bro i don't know yeah and so like now like people think uh my son just turned six months and people think he's like a year old because he's like super like put together <laughs> and stuff and so like when he came out like the doctors are all like yo this is this is a good looking newborn and like yeah. you know it was kind of like it was kind of messed up he's for about to say, cash in the 401k <laughs> <laughs> like they i mean they he didn't look old he didn't look old like all their babies like it was this was a little out of pocket one of the nurses who just came from another birth just came in it's like yo this baby's the best baby i've seen in the month like this is crazy and i'm like 
that that's that's a good thing but also like they, these are like newborns like yeah it's yeah. mad funny but like my favorite thing with newborns is like the color change they just like they're like mighty morph they like I oh don't even yeah know they're like a Jax out of um what what is it like the incredibles jack jack yeah 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 just over yeah, here yeah, changing no, colors it, from like red yeah. to blue to brown purple like, what is going on purple, purple yeah yeah purple white to brown to blue to, it's it's kind of like it was within hours i saw it he just pinked up i'm like what the hell he's How a solid supporter of the lgbtq plus <laughs> not the rainbow baby <laughs> that baby came out as a supporter part oh my god that's that's hilarious oh my goodness what were we talking about okay you okay uh what was shake. This? oh oh okay let's go to the next topic here we go <laughs> <laughs> speeding through um the next thing i want to talk about have you seen uh well, well i forgot her name it's a youtuber apology i think it's C colleen oh. ball tingler ball juggler <laughs> colleen ball hey not Ballinger. to be confused with uh the pirate ball finger <laughs> <laughs> there's a pirate out there in history named ball fingers and that's also cursed but yeah uh, colleen ballinger i believe is her name and i, I don't did. know anything about her apparently she was a youtuber back in the day but i saw her apology video for whatever she did and god i i hate it so much i don't know anything about her never watched oh, her but god it's it's horrendous have you seen it? but you, you know, know the context that? right you know the context a of little why bit she's okay i, I so, so this is uh once you told me this you wanted to talk about something i was like what youtube apology i'm not on the thing but um i saw the start of her of her downfall and i didn't know it because i did like her name apparently like her her YouTube like famous person name is uh, Miranda Sings, I think. Yeah, Miranda and, Sings. Yeah, so I saw the beginning. This girl comes out. It was on TikTok. I I sent it to you, and I was just like, "What is happening?" Because this is the weird part. Like to give you guys context before you hear the, because I think this is the better way to receive it. But this is not okay. Let me let me contextualize it actually, because uh, Reel it most. Back. Most people would not have ever heard of this person or this controversy had she not made this stupid apology video. This I apology video hate it. is the like not just like hey, hey like it's catchy. You gotta admit, Sai, it is catchy. I... And don't tell them why. Don't, don't tell them why. You gotta admit, there's some. It's a little catchy. Not in a good way, though. Not in a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. pisses me off. It it actually brings back a childhood memory. Oh my goodness! Oh it, no! It, okay, it, okay, okay, okay. Have you, growing up, have you ever watched like the um the the, the word the word things? It, it's like a word video. It's like cartoony, and it's like uh oh, conjunction junction. What's your function? Like that shit. I've heard of it, but no. I, was that, that is School what her song? Or, maybe, but but oh. that that's what her song reminds me of. Which I guess I kind of spoiled it right there. But she sings a song. <laughs> and she starts playing the ukulele and the whole song is supposed to be like her uh, quote apology which you know i don't really care what she did i i feel like uh, was a crime committed i'm not even too sure about no, that to be honest. oh no it's bad it's bad so this is this is, is it the bad issue. I, i've seen it's some people awful. reacting to it but i don't know what, what okay so give me the okay. rundown what did she do uh let it loose we're, we'll summarize it Come as in grooming. the song R summarizing as grooming that is what she did uh, as far as uh physical like anything like that yes and the crazy part about it is so she had sex with a kid no 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 not not oh. that but like it, it it's like so creepy it's so creepy so this is this is this is why i was like the her apology video made it worse for her because she brought more eyes to the thing i and i think that if people watched it in the right order they would react to it more appropriately because all you need to see is one of these clips and there's no defense for any of it there's no defense absolutely none and that is what she's trying to do in the video based off of what she says in the video in her thing you can kind of feel like okay you know this is like people are attacking her she's coming out weird to do it in song weird that this is the subject matter of your song uh hey but you make kids content uh emphasis on kids content which is where we come back to because how i was interested because when when i 
you said YouTube apology. I remember seeing and hearing about it. And I just clicked off because I immediately dismissed this person because of what I saw the first time, which was this girl. I think she's like 18 now or 16. She was saying she came out saying she is was sexually assaulted by by her on stage as part of a performance. This was so this girl. Oh, I know what you're bringing up. It's the fart. The farting, yeah, right? Yeah, I think it's that one. Yes. Yeah, I think the it's, farting. Yeah, so that's how that's how I got into this, where this lady, um, she does skits for kids, and they're like comedy shows for kids, and they're supposed to be like lighthearted, funny, parents go to this. And apparently one of the skits, and this is the issue, right? The girl says she was sexually assaulted, but she opted into it. So that's where, when this came out, the girl got slandered crazy. And I was going to bring this up on the podcast. I didn't know that this was going to be a thing. That's why I sent it. I was like, what do you feel about this? Because I feel like this is just like, this artist needs to be the focus. Why is this girl being the focus? Because you have this girl who's a minor opting into not a fart bit no no this skit that she wanted to go up for it. she said this keep in mind she's a minor keep in mind she's just like it's a hype this is an i like a, a like someone she looks up to she wants to be a part of the fun like these videos go viral that's why you have to be so careful with content with minors like posed towards minors right the skit that she wanted to be a part of was like a strip tease uh uh skit that's literally what it was so she dressed up in a with a skirt and leggings so that it was easier to be like so that the lady colleen ballinger would look at the crowd and pick her out for this skit that's why she dressed up like this this is the girl saying this by the way this is why a lot of people dragged her and like but then she made a response video she's like i was 12 like I, I i was like i was just going like and this is crowds of people like hundreds of people coming to these things wanting to be a part of this skit relating to like stripping and listen any skit relating to comedy kids and it has strip no right so, so from what i know though she doesn't actually strip though right she okay so so this is to give you context she didn't get chosen for the strip thing she got chosen for some weird like fart thing i guess and the way the fart thing was and keep in mind she's wearing a skirt she looks at the girl lays her down on the, her back in front of her spread her legs all the way like basically you can split in midair and the girl as a 12 year old said she was holding down her skirt because she thought she was being exposed to the crowd and that was for a not stripping skit right like that's crazy to me yeah and and like like you can fart skit yeah like me like what so like, so so she squatted down on this girl laying on the floor and then farted in her face no no no, no, no. she held her ankles and opened her ankles up yeah while she's on her back and it's like she's not wearing pants like she's wearing pants she's wearing like shorts kind of things like like things that you can't see it like people were like oh so why'd you dress so slutty she's a 12 year old and when she showed her the image of her she looked like a normal 12 year old like a normal like not even like a modern like our age very goofy dressed normal 12 year old i'm not like slandering her but like she was dressed fine right unless you were trying to say like oh people should hide their ankles and their kneecaps right <laughs> but no she was dressed fine and she was wearing underwear and shorts because she was like, you know, I want to be in this thing, but I want to be responsible. And she opened, like, grabbed her thing. But it's like, if you, why were you going to choose someone for, like, a leg splitting thing wearing a skirt? And she's wait, like, wait, wait, wait. So, so I'm still confused. Uh, what, yeah. what is the skit here? D apparently, it's like a farting thing. Like, she opens up the leg and then, like, a fart comes and, out. And that was it? I, I guess. I don't, I didn't watch the full thing. I, I, I didn't watch it either. So, like, yeah. we're going into this with, with minimal information, but. No. I, so I so so as far as you ask like the touching right that's yeah. not as far as it goes because after this apology video I was watching someone reacting to it and they pulled up a bunch of videos because God help me I didn't want to look this up I was already pissed because the girl that the way I received it was everyone was dragging this girl who just like became an adult and in hindsight was like you know I opted in for this but like it took me a long time to realize what happened and now I'm confident i went to therapy this is rude like very 
uh, drastically harm my life. She's still doing these things. And I know there's other people doing this stuff. So that's, you know, she came out for, for a lot of reasons. She's largely fine, but she opened up and she was being dragged. And I was like, what are we, what are we talking about? Like, what is, what is this lady? And like, I just never, like, I didn't think that it would come to this point where, where they find out that about this because she starts an apology video addressing all of these allegations, which I didn't even get to some of them through a song on a ukulele guys. And, and this is the most upsetting part to me. This is the most upsetting part. Like there, these kids weren't like alone, like parents are in the crowd watching, cheering, like th this is videotaped. It's on footage. Like, I I'm not in this space, but like, I'm like, damn, none of these parents, I'm almost upset at the parents for letting this, this girl says she's been in the space for 15 years and she's been doing this kind of stuff for 12 years or something like that. How is this sold out shows? Parents bring, bro, one hey, of them was there's a comedy so taste for everybody, I guess. Would you, one would, of you them was... would you take your son there? Bro, I, I, my wife, we were we were going to a library thing, and I was telling my wife like I have to see this show first. I have to see yeah, it. The, because it, like, the minute you find out it's Colleen Ballfingers up on stage, you're like, well, <laughs> we got we, yo, we got we got to sell our tickets. Is not even wrong. It's not wrong. You want to know why? Why? I think I, I've, seen, touch, I, I've seen the, this clip. The I cheese think. ball. Yeah, the, the cheese, cheese ball thing. So so I I'll explain this one. I'll I'll yeah, take a turn at this. It. Oh my god! Uh, it makes my blood boil. I hate this. It's it's a skit where she invites like this kid upstage, and then they're like they have like a bag of cheese balls. Which I'm not. See, here's the thing. I think keep going, keep going. This right here would be fine if it was funny, but the the crime is that it wasn't really funny at all. What happens is she has a bag of cheese balls. She brings a kid upstage, and then she's like, "Wow, cheese balls are cool, right?" And then the kid's like, "Yeah, woo, cheese balls." And then I think she like puts the cheese balls like in her pants and then she starts like waving around the cheese balls in her pants as well. And then she offers the kid to like grab one. It's, it's weirder than that. And, it's weirder than and that. And here, here's the thing. I feel like it would be more acceptable if it was like a great haha -ha funny joke. But like, I, I guess people in the crowd were laughing it up. But I was like, it's not really like a joke at the end of the day. Like, I don't see it as like weird. I find it more like cringe. No, 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 like, no, no. I watched no, no. it. I'm like, ah, ooh. But I didn't watch the whole you video. You didn't hear though. this. You didn't hear the story that. Right. So it, these are skits. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So that, like, like, okay. So I explained it right. I think normal, you take 10 adults, parents, let's just say parents. 10 parents, they have kids. They have that uncle that shows up. They put cheese ball in their pants, ask the kids to reach into them. 10 out of 10 would be like, that's, that's weird. That's not happening. So you got to ask yourself, how does she sugarcoat this so that a crowd of parents can accept this? This is the skit and this doesn't make it any better. The skit was, oh, we're we're alone in the woods, you and I. And she yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she, she built up the scenery. I forgot about that portion. She d she also makes it romantic. Does she? she oh, put, I didn't she, think she, that she part. She says that the guy, the kid is something and she, they're like old lovers or something. They're in a, she actually uses the word like intimate, like this is an intimate moment and she gets closer to him. And, and so like they're in like the camp or whatever, right? And then they're yeah. like, oh, like what happens if a bear comes? What should we do? And the kid like, oh, we should hide our snacks or whatever. And she's like, that's a great answer. You don't want the bear to get snacks. Where's the best place to hide our snacks? Oh, inside our clothes. So let's hide in a place where a bear wouldn't go. And she stuffs it in her pants and you get a laugh like, ha 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 ha. That's so funny. And then she sits down and she's like, oh, like, since we're so close and snuggly, are you hungry? And then she, she pulls into the thing and she eats one. She's like, do you want some? And then he goes in and he literally goes, I never thought there was a world where I would be in Miranda's pants. Amen, brother. That kid that got the good stuff. <laughs> Like, like and wild. to me, I'm sitting there like, how are their parents in the I, thing? I like to imagine the kids' parents are like clapping off stage like, woo, there's, there's my boy getting cheese balls. Like, I, I'm not going to say it's it. It's kind of a but wild like, performance. And the thing is, like like I said, I, I, I stand by this point. I feel like a good, like this could be very controversial, but 
I feel like a good majority of this would be fine if it was funny and it, it flowed well and it wasn't as creepy or as emphasized on the pants part. Like, if this was a funny skit, like, like maybe we watched it, we busted up laughing and we're like, okay, it makes sense why, like, the whole thing here. But she built up this narrative of, like, oh, we're romantic lovers in the woods. I got, you know, cheese balls in my pants. And it's like, nothing really made sense for, like, the comedy aspect of it, which is yeah. where I'm like, okay, yeah, no, this this is just weird. So, it, like, it, it could have like, been funny, haha, it's funny, ooh. This kind of thing happens to, uh, like this exact like you're saying this exact scenario could happen i'm sure lots of people have funny stories people i was watching react to it said like yo when we were kids we we stuck our, each other's hands in each other's pants but they were like but we're the same age we did that on our own yeah it's not weird we all did if that the kids the do that on their own right and that's how you get like this kind of comedy when it's not an adult in it you usually uh, from my knowledge, you get goofy scenarios when you give the kids a prompt, they act out funny, and if they go overboard, you stop them. But like, it's not bad if you're not coaxing the weird scenarios. Kids come up with weird scenarios on their own. You don't need to do that, right? Yeah. So it's like, so like even adults come up with weird scenarios, but it's fine because it's like age, age, right? It's not a 36 year old and a 12 year old, right? Yeah, I, I, I forgot how old she was. Which yeah, is she's another thing. old. I thought she was like, uh, like. No, I wasn't gonna say our age. I, I guess we're getting up there, but I was about to say like, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, Jesus, we're getting old. Um, I was gonna say like, I thought she was like 18 years old or you know like a teen. No, dude, she's when like, she started. Yeah, she, she's old yeah. now though, so yeah. it's kind of weird that she's uh, and, doing it with kids. And also, I would be so sad if when me and you got older, our entire audience is like 10 year olds. I'd be actually super sad. I might just quit YouTube at that point. Like guys, we just gotta like, give up. That is that is what like I'm you know I've talked about this we we've talked about this there's always a timeline on how long we're going to be in the space what most people do in this if we became successful we got a podcast or or like we open up like we got so successful that we don't have to be on camera we can create the environment someone could be on camera and, and carry on like what we're doing and that's what a lot of kid content is supposed to be right like blues clues like all these hosts like there's a t lifespan for it and you know she needed to do that but that's where like a few lines disconnect right because she that's one of her defenses she said that she started this a long time ago and because like you know she was younger more naive she didn't know how to create boundaries like that's where all this started and very like she said she changed a while ago i think from my context the last like crazy incident was three years ago so she's 36 now that would make her 33 and so she could say like she was 24 when she started dming people and like they were 16 or whatever and i get that i can get like you know uh being closer to you know i, I wouldn't necessarily be closer to like some random 16 year old but like more so she said she overshared a lot, right? Yeah. And I get that if Apparently, you're trying to create a community. She was in that... a group chat with a bunch of kids talking about her divorce, which I was like, yeah. I feel like kids like, are the last people I would turn to if I was in a divorce, which I've been through a divorce. And let me tell you, I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> when I was going through my divorce, oh, I didn't go to like the local elementary school and be like, hey, kids. <laughs> Fuck. Me and my wife oh, are having God. a quarrel. What do I do here? You know, like, I, you hit them with the I've been there, done that. I've been and that's there, not... done that. And I don't hit a five year old. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and, you know, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. 15 years ago, the Internet was weird. Very different. You got a lot of, away with a lot of things. But I think still, no matter what, kids were not on the menu. <laughs> for a lot of reasons. Kids, yeah, kids weren't on the menu over there. <laughs> and and, you know, so as far as like her defense, I also get like the creator space is difficult. Like even today, we so, get new creators who can't create boundaries properly. Yeah, it, it, it's a thing. You know, I'll, I'll go on a limb. I, we have viewers in our main communities, that are high schoolers or whatever. And it's like, you know, you navigate this thing where it's like it's just a boundary. You set a boundary and that's it right like you're not too involved I, in their life but she's making kids content yeah wait okay but here's the thing though did she commit a crime at the end of the day because that, that that's one thing i'm very unsure about i don't i i think you know we can call her weird and creepy but is yeah, there a legitimate did. crime there because i because from what i hear like like i said i i barely know about this all i hear is kids a uh, weird person and that's and then freaking ukulele which i i think the ukulele is the biggest crime in my opinion but like like what what happened here 
she so so i haven't seen all the clips but there are yeah. more it, it it's all videotaped all of these skits and this is what i was going to get at the, the i think the main thing that she's succumbing to is the double standard that's what she's succumbing to because think about it like this you're a 24 year old guy yeah. doing this you would get caught you'd get stopped so fast the reason why she was able to do this so long and this might be a hot take it hurt me this i don't think it's misogynist i think that the way, reason why she got along with this or got away with this for so long is the same reason why you know there's a standard of you'd rather have a babysitter that's a girl rather than a boy and like you know there's anecdotal evidence whatever like but that's that's the thing right girls are given way more more uh 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 freedom i guess to be intimate with random stranger kids and i'll say I, I i'm like that too a little bit right like uh it you know zenith my son like all these girls are like just surround and flock with them and you know I, i'm watching with a watchful eye but like at the end of the day i just have more trust for a lot of these women who are like at my age or older who have kids or or not right like like just around my age i i do you know it's just a thing versus a single dude you know what i mean it's it's a very different thing and so i think the reason why she got away with it for so long is because you just look at it like a like a girl who looks younger than she is and she's you know playful she's not doing anything like like overtly harmful she's not hitting she's not like the kids are laughing they're enjoying it in the moment right but in hindsight it's something that does cross boundaries and we wouldn't have gotten here i don't think until we started looking at the double yeah. standard the way it is where it's like 15 years later she's been doing this for that long you look at the videos from years and years and years you got to ask yourself why has she been getting away with it i think it's the double standard and she's getting hit with the thing where like she's kind of saying in the thing was like one of her defenses is like hey this is it was i i'm not i'm not I, I didn't hear the full song but like i'm summarizing it's just like it's sort of consensual i'm not doing this in a secretive way i'm on stage people volunteer and their parents are watching and so like you just because there's witnesses to the crime doesn't mean that it didn't but happen. Is, is there and a so, crime there, though? Like, like is, is she going to get charged or anything? Or, like, th that's the main thing I'm wondering. Because I feel like everything I've heard so far is, like, yeah, she's, like, a weird, creepy person. And then she'll get yeah. backlash. But will she, will she like, go to jail? I, I really, I don't think so. Like, I think, I, I, I think feel like this is just, like, a internet thing for right now. Unless there's, like, actually, like her touching kids in like a super sexual way i feel like there's not any so, substance to it minus like she's a creep right so like even the leg spreading one i think is is grounds for like you could there's the thing is with children especially minors which is why like the law is super hairy it's kind of expansive like there's i think there's misconduct there's yeah. negligence there's assault there's adults have like i think two or three uh, categories here whereas kids there's like a wide range of it and when it comes to like video and distributing it's like it's like locked and sealed so if there's even a small iota of clips where it it, it, it there's like wrongful thing uh or anything like that then yeah and as far as like them volunteering there's um the same thing that um uh, Andrew Tate, the same thing that he, uh, the lover boy method of, of grooming kind of what he got the webcam business going. People are saying there's a, there's a, I forgot what it's called. It's called lover boy tactic. And that is a legal term. I think there's, that is applicable in this situation because she never want to be this. called lover boy. <laughs> yeah That's yeah it's so a cursed. weird thing it, it's basically like on under the guise of like love and creating duress and like mental whatever right so that's on camera there's a slew of text messages and group chats that have to be siphoned through because apparently she sent her underwear to minors so that's that is that is yeah grounds. that's, that's kind yeah. of interesting <laughs> yeah she sent and she said that they were begging for it and so she just <laughs> like that that was her defense so like even at the minimum i think she's gonna face penalties for sure yeah uh, and then at the maximum which is probably the stuff i didn't hear yet yeah and like i i turned on the ac earlier that's why i got off camera because like i me and si have been talking for three four hours 
it, and like it it's hot but this shit gets me heated like my blood boils this is i'm like, getting heated i like that like, i like that phrase yeah because it's like there's so much shit that is just wild like i i don't know if i ever told you i was gonna make a kids music a long time ago because uh my wife she worked with kids a lot and then i just like made random songs like on the spot for like just to entertain kids and my it was before baby shark i was telling my friend uh who's a director now that like yo i think kids music is gonna be the big thing because the adpocalypse and so like i had a bunch of songs and he just needed to produce it and then i think i like i was diagnosed yeah i was diagnosed then so i just like dropped everything my wife was like you should still start it the cancer killed your your kid dreams yeah yeah so fun fun fact i was applying for sesame street as a writer um back then and so the due date the due date was my surgery so Dang, I couldn't... that's that's like some uh, some Pixar movie shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know, like, like so um, I found out about it three days before my surgery. I spent the two days before preparing, like, I had to write a screenplay or whatever. And um, I did it. I did. I learned how to do it in a day, then wrote it in a day. Then I reviewed it, the like, the night before my surgery. I was going to do it. I submitted it. Like, I had my wife submit it while I was in surgery because that was when the due date was. Um, didn't get it obviously this is why i'm here but uh yeah like like and so like the, all this stuff and now that i have a kid too it's like you have to be so cognizant of of all these things because it's so it, it's so uh insidious how these people um it, you know i, I want to be charitable to not to colleen ballinger but like kids content is so hard it's so hard to make you sometimes you can be uh negligent like you could have all the best in mind when you unintentionally do something wrong and it, it it's a bad thing but like you had good intentions and it doesn't have to be as bad as what this lady is doing or something else it could just it, it just you know like we learn so much about babies every single day every single year uh but you know it, it's a hard space to be in and what i will say though is uh her defense now that we should go to the ukulele part of it she, oh, that song is the biggest crime in my opinion. That that was just bad. Yeah, if you guys need, you guys check it out. It's, I will admit it is catchy. I've but... been trying to delete that from my head. Like it's such a it's it's a catchy song. It's like it a kids bop. Of, yeah, it's like a kids song that you'd hear like in elementary school or middle school, and it is it is awful, man. I I really hated listening to that song, and it's it's Let stuck me... in my head for the entire day. Let me tell you something. When I, because I didn't, know, I didn't recognize her. I, I like no stocks. I saw this lady in a controversy. Colleen Ballinger, Miranda sings nothing. None of that sh stuff stuck in my memory. Who, who is this person, right? I'm like, okay, worst apology of all time. Let me click. Let me, let me see this. I click on it. I don't even know. I clicked on it. I watched someone react to it because I don't want to give her money because she's probably. She made it ten minutes long, guys. The entire time she's singing on a ukulele. These are the these are the allegations that she is fighting. Let me ask you real quick. If you're fighting grooming charges, do you pull out a kid song? Like. I that That's is that she is knows. the wildest defense hey, of all. No, she, hey, you, you, you got to admit, you got to admit, she fought them in her court. She she <laughs> she did a domain expansion and she brought them over. The amount of whiplash hits I got in the first like thirty seconds or song. So first, worst apology of all time. What am I getting into? Pulls out a ukulele. Okay, we know why it's bad. Okay, now second thing. What what is she apologizing for? Well, she's saying misinformation. There's the toxic. Everyone no, likes the stop. toxic. Oh, no, I, 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 I have I have tried my best to delete that from my head. Don't you dare Yo, freaking bring back the, that jingle. She she okay. I'm not gonna bring it back, but she says Thank that you. all of this was just a misinformation station. Yeah, everyone's hopped on the toxic train, um, of of misinformation, whatever garbage, right? Yeah. So you're like, yes. okay, we're in 2023. That happens all the time. Sai does that about me and and a few other characters, and and I do that about Sai. We I do love it for spreading fun. misinformation. That's actually yeah. one of my favorite pastimes. And and I like fighting misinformation. That's why me and Sai are the duo right now, right? Yes. So. Every week so, I come out with a new allegation for Par. Like, you know, I'm going to start the next episode and be like, Par, who did you kidnap this time? Who's in your basement now? And it's going to get clipped out, bro. I'm going to end up as the Co Colleen Ballinger And I right can't now, wait. And then you're going to whip out uh, some Bangladesh ukulele. instrument. 
Not the bottom. Oh my, the seat. Like, I don't even know. This, hey. uh, the tabla. The, the, that'd be if, dope. If, I know how to play if, those. If, if anybody Harmonium. ever has allegations of me, I'll rip out my uh, my rice farming techniques. I'm going to start plucking rice the in like sock. a symp symphonic way. <laughs> Yeah, you or start just reading socks. the comments and you use a sock after every comment, like cause like I wipe laugh. the tears away with my sock. <laughs> yeah, whichever way. There but um, what was I saying? Hopefully uh, oh yeah, get yeah. The sock reference. So, <laughs> go watch the. There's literally a thumbnail with a wet sock on it. Go watch it, guys. Why is the sock great wet? Episode. If you're a guy, you know what's up. Sure. Um. So she she does this right, and she's in the song, and then the next line is my lawyers told me not to talk about this but they didn't say not to sing and i'm like hey she's, she's not wrong though is <laughs> she wrong part? Dead. like is she is, wrong though like this, this is a this is a children like that is not the kind of loophole you want to hey, impose on kids i blame the lawyers they weren't clear enough my man it like it, and so she's just like my lawyers didn't want to tell me to like, i was saying like a spongebob and i'm like and then she said, but they didn't say anything about sing. I'm like, hey, and then, I blame the lawyers for this one. They should have been more clear. <laughs> Yo, and then, and then like you, you start getting the realization, right? This is a big deal. Uh, if you just watch this, you don't know any context of what she's saying. But then like, you're like, you realize she's making it a kid song. Who is she apologizing to? And why is she making it such a catchy kids jingle? She's like literally trying to like riz up kids again with her apology. You know, like even if they don't believe me, here's a song. Like, you know, I'm like, why didn't you just take this like an adult? Like, what the hell? And then sh so so that's all good and dandy, right? Awful start. Um, the entire point of her thing was confused because she was like, these are this is in, misinformation and rumors but then she also goes i'm and, a new person now and then yeah she kind of like admits it at the same time it's like damn yeah but you're like, the huh? right there come on i, I think like, i think the best thing she should have done is just not say anything i feel like that's always the best answer which w was what the lawyer said yeah if she literally didn't say anything me and you probably would not be talking about it like we would not give two f's half the Absolutely internet would not care not. about it yeah no I, th that's the thing the lawyers were right but like the amount of like like wrong that she did like she brought it got i think 300 400 000 views in four hours it's sitting at i think over three million views right now which you gotta you gotta match i i think that pays over her lawyer fees though maybe this was smart maybe the lawyers are like you know what i'm getting bagged now you know what yeah three million in what Three million. It's over three million views in I think twenty four hours. Oh my god, yeah, that's hitting K-pop music bro. video levels. She is getting views, my man. <laughs> that's good. It's a ten minute video, guys. That's yeah. She that is she raked money. in the dough. Like I don't know if you guys know about YouTube monetization, but I, I'm sure you guys know three million is a lot, a lot of views, right? Like I, I'm sure you can imagine how much money that lady raked in. Yeah, and you know, here's Maybe the thing. Maybe this is the plan all along. I mean, it worked. If if she wanted to get views, you gotta admit it. It kind of worked. Yeah, the thing is, she would have gotten views. She could retire with this here and there. But this is this is how I know it's for revenue. Why is it ten minutes? It was a ten long minutes song. is literally ten minutes is literally like like that is the monetization goal, right? Like you don't because they like eight minutes is where you're supposed to go, but they like kind of like push you down if you're at eight minutes, so you go like nine to ten. She had exactly like a ten minute thing. I'm like, she knew nah, what was she's she knew doing what was this like the optimal thing. She's like, a YouTuber through and through, par. Yeah, like uh, like insiders for you guys, like uh, you know, that is like we the got, optimal time we when you guys get, see. We respect the game. Yeah, and but the thing is, you and I barely ever put ten minute videos out, to the point where it's like we look at each other, and we're like, we should, we need more ten minute videos. Yeah, <laughs> but I like, don't know. So he, here's here's some quick fun facts. Whenever me and Par do a collab, when we first got together, I was like, hey Par, let's keep this at like twenty minutes, man. And then yeah. every video we do is like over an hour. I'm like, oh, kill me. <laughs> Fucking kill me. I got I got to edit this down a little bit. And then it just still ends up being like two hours long. Yeah. It works yeah. out and though. People like it. Yeah, we just we just have fun. But the thing is, it's like, like if you, like, if we went for 10 minutes, it's not only for us specifically, we would have to target, we'd, we'd have to conscientiously go to that length by either cutting or 
preparing for our conversation, which we don't, which like, it's like, it's fine. It's whatever. It's over 10 minutes. Who cares? Right. But they hit 10 minutes. Like that is why you see some of your favorite YouTubers maybe make a sponsored post. And then it's like, oh, why is this? Why is this nine minutes long? Huh? Why did why is their normal videos 30 minutes long? And then Something's all of a sudden interesting going on. Yeah. It's like, Something's boom, happening. they hit the, they hit the thing. Right. So, so, you know, just a little insider there. And when I saw that, that was like one of the first things I saw as a, like as a YouTuber, I looked at that apology video. I was like, stop. No, and same. then it was a music video. I was like, stop this. Dude, and then she sang and I crazy. said, no, it's going to show <sighs> up on Spotify next. It's going to be trending. I swear to God, hey, bro. I swear to God. But you know what else is going to be training pretty soon? What? The pee out of my pants, because I got to use the bathroom. And this is a perfect time to end the podcast as well, because I... Let me tell you, Par. The entire time we're talking about Colleen ball fingers, I've just been squirming my balls around in my seat. I, I got to use the, the bathroom hard. Hey, that was that ending is deserves some jail time, just like Colleen Ballinger and Miranda sings, whichever yes. one you want to go with. So as hey, this is a great topic. I added I put what question mark exclamation point at the very end. So I this like is that. perfect. What? So <laughs> Oh, there was there was a phrase I was supposed to use this video and I never did. I wrote it down too last night. Do you want to pull it out? Yeah, I was playing a game last night on stream and I uh there was a phrase that somebody said called pants brown. Like, uh, I watched a YouTube video, like, I've been watching YouTube short horror videos, and one of the oh. titles that had over 70 million views was 30 scary, 30 scary videos that will leave your pants brown. That is, that is fun. That's yeah, fun that, stuff that's right a there. great title. I, was, I, I need to bring it up somehow. And I didn't have the chance to, so, and I also have to make my pants yellow. So I got, I got, you know, I was like, this, this is the best time to bring it out. All right, hey. you go, and then I'll add some last-minute remarks. Oh, there we go. Okay. All Try right. not to slander Later, me. Si. Yeah, I won't. I won't. So if you guys don't know, that is a uh, size third cup of coffee going down the toilet. Uh, and this is great. But the thing I want to say is, I'm pretty sure Sai would want to have said it, is we got the logo made, but he put it in the comments, the cat shark thing. I didn't even get to look at it. So maybe I'll just put my reaction to it right here. Um Let's see, 50-50 thing. There was one other thing, so I'm kind of like stalling. Uh, by the time you guys get this video, will we have the other stuff? I'm going to be trying to... Oh, yeah, 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 this is the announcement. I'm going to be trying to start up getting shorts out for... Oop, it froze. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, I'm going to be trying getting shorts out. So if you guys uh, just look out for that, give, me, give us the support for that because... Uh, YouTube works on like a momentum system. So the more you guys support, especially at the beginning, the first hour, whatever, definitely boost us. I'm going to try clipping the Titan sub one and then some things here and there. It's hard to do um, on top of everything else, but I do want to get this podcast hitting more eyes. And so I just figured doing shorts is going to be a good thing. So if you guys, you know, can support that. I, I brought up the new logo that you oh. you. Because yeah, I figured you want to announce cursed. it. Yeah, no. Um, I didn't. I, I didn't like look at it yet. Let me see. Uh, so we have a new logo for the fifty fifty, which I'm sure you guys already know. It's gonna be changed in the future. Trust me. Um, I commissioned it. I paid. <laughs> I, <laughs> I paid a solid twenty bucks for it, and I, you know, the, the guy was like, "Hey, man, I did it for you," and I'm like, "Oh, cool, cool," and I, I checked it out, and I didn't have the heart to tell him it didn't look good. So I accepted it with like both hands like this. And I was like, thank you. Thank you, good sir. And I, I made it our logo. And quality wise, it's not bad. I'm just not a fan of can, how it turned out. Can you send me that though? Because I'm a big fan um, of, of uh, prototypes. Like, yeah. And so like, like if you guys don't know, the current, lo the lo old logo, the original one that we used as a placeholder, you can buy that on a hat. And I just, I like that. But like now I want to get this and I want to put this somewhere. Just like, it's like a inside <laughs> joke for the first, yeah. what, 430 subscribers Wait, that we have right Mark, now. Have you seen the, the hidden logo on the other email account? No. So, so yeah, I don't want to spoil anything behind the scenes, but yeah, yeah, uh, go check the go other to. email and then see the logo I put on there. Okay, hold on. I want to lag the video because I was doing a bunch of... I have, like, so much to open on my computer that I open up the website and it just crashed my thing, so... <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, we're, we're going to get a new logo eventually. Um, again, I just don't want to shell out another 20 bucks. But if you guys have a better logo that you can draw, please send it my way. 
there is the 5050 discord which i believe is linked down below if not i'll link it again and i'll put it in all the descriptions uh minus that though yeah it's 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 a cat wearing a shark hoodie which is what i told the guy but instead he put a shark on the cat's head so that's kind of a rip yeah, yeah. He, he, that got lost in translation so we um, hate to see it yeah but as far as this thing i i, I feel, oh there was something i was to segue to which but uh, we, we i just want to say it because maybe we'll discuss it next time was uh mr beast he uh oh he yeah. went through his weight transformation thing and i thought that was really i like that i like that it, but i i imagine there's a lot of controversy with why, that which why is there controversy with mr beast getting in shape because a lot of people they hear like uh you know, I, I'm putting this on there, but I've heard other people get in shape. They're like, oh, like he his tweet basically read out. It's like, I woke up one morning and noticed I was obese. And um, then I decided to change that. And he lost pounds and he showed the thing. And reactions to other celebrities doing that was like, oh, you're fat phobic. And I'm like, damn, that's crazy. But then oh, also, yeah, I am super fat phobic. OK, so like for me, the way I looked at it was like, like I always look at it like this is like yo like at the end of the day if every single doctor unanimously can agree that losing weight is healthy for you I think that's it's not a we shouldn't like look down yeah, upon no, someone losing weight like that's, that's just where like I'm crazy at. it's me. like like I um I put on you know the, the past year I put on like a solid 15 20 pounds and it's like oh dang that's cool and all because I always wanted to gain some weight but at the same yeah. time I looked in the mirror and I was like is this the weight I want to gain and I think yeah. two weeks ago I said no, it's not. I'm I'm getting the the bad kind of weight. So for two weeks straight, with like obviously a rest day in between, I've been working out every single day. Mm. So if you want to call me fat phobic, go for it. I I will get that tattooed on my forearm. Yeah, because like I the, am the, fat phobic. I just want to be healthy. That's where the internet. <laughs> you know? Some people I don't know if it changed. I I haven't seen if Mr. No, people are that. snowflakes. People are wild because the, at the end of the day, the whole premise of being accepting of anybody's body is so that people have autonomy over what they do with their body so if i look at myself and think i'm heavy yeah there's a realm of like hey like uh body dysmorphia i think that yeah. is a very important topic that gets conflated with this but like he was just like i i was obese and the reason why i brought it up is because he had a picture of himself of when he woke up yeah, and, and realized and that and he's he's not that big you yeah, know, he's, he's he like an average dude big. yeah yeah he's he's an average dude but the thing is like clinically that could be obese that could be very easily obese from a clinical standpoint and the thing is the other people that people don't know is that mr beast is a crazy athlete like he was a d1 baseball player who's gonna be like a pro and then he he didn't and so like for him he probably has a low body uh uh fat percentage anyways and he's still like cracked i think the reason why he 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 uh did this is because like he started i forgot who he collabed with but recently he had like a um uh, tom brady collab which is kind of funny but like uh and then and then like a few other sports people back in the day when he started and this the thing. thing is too is that like i'm sure every guy me you even women too like you know you know what you look like in your prime right like at some point somebody was in their prime like peak physique and then you look in the mirror and you look at that and you're like dang i'm not there anymore that's like, yeah. I woke up two weeks ago and I saw that. I was like, I'm not at my peak. Like a year ago, I was probably stronger than I am right now. So I'm going to hit yeah. the gym again. And I, I've been, like I said, I've been beating my willy and going to the gym like every, every day. I am putting that gym membership to work. Yeah. Right now it's hard for me. Cause I, I want, cause like my son, he very clearly like dad bod is real. Like that is yeah, so dad, functional. Yeah. Dad for bod, babies. home bod, like that shit's like, it, like it, is, it hits bro. I need to get a dad bod because my son like i'm too like muscly and then bony that like he is not as comfy on me and then so i'm like i need to get a dad bod and i'm trying but the thing is like the amount of energy that it takes to take care of him like elevates how much more i have to eat and i just don't have time to like do all that work so like now i'm trying to get to a point uh like during the break that we had for for our normal schedule like incorporate like more exercising i've been having protein shakes and all that stuff doing my old stuff to bulk up a little bit also with all my good health Dang. Uh, news and stuff so like all that stuff and and at the end of the day good that's health. like wait 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 your health cancer update are you are you living uh yeah it's funny because like hell yeah like the thing is and this is this is something i know 
uh it is a funny funny thing i would only put this at the end of a podcast because yeah i, I don't know nobody's people... gonna be here anymore we got like two people listening yeah yeah because we already said goodbyes and they're like oh goodbye but like with um with my uh thing right so like my first surgeon was literally the best surgeon ever for head and neck surgery uh and and i've said that many times and i will say that i'll carry that to my grave where he's a homie i i'm blessed to have him they called him the wizard the the like the surgical wizard like he's crazy he wrote every single book on uh my cancer thyroid cancer and like head and neck surgery like 400 published things on it right god tier he wanted so I have a five-year mark. I'm about to cross it uh, this November of being um, after surgery, uh, five-year mark. So five-year mark for my cancer means that it's basically 99% chance if they see that the cancer doesn't grow in the five years, 99% of uh, of their, their data reflects that 99% of the time it won't grow for the rest of my life. But the hey, problem is- that's what I'm talking the, the, about. The, the problem is 99% of their data is old 80, 80 year old, 70 year old people. So they don't really know. Oh, because <laughs> they just die like next Tuesday. Yeah. 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 That's so they rip. don't, they don't have that much thing, but now a bunch of young people are getting it. I'm one, I'm like, my doctor is telling me like m the year I got it was like the first year of like the uptick of people, people my age getting it. So um like my my all my stuff like i i put my body to to all the trials and not trials all the scientific data they, they have all my data yeah um, but um so so i had the five-year mark he did my surgery i'm in a place where i can still do surgery i could walk into any surgeon any any anybody in the in america and i could ask them to do surgery and i'd be an operable standpoint right i had to risk the off chance that my thing was so borderline that it still grew and then compromised my systems. Um, whereas most situations you'd want it to be, the cancer's completely gone. You went five years and now, yeah, no cancer, but I have, there's cancer here, there's cancer here. I know exactly where they are. I could feel, I could feel like, I could feel it right here. I know exactly where it is. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's, uh, it's like having a superpower. Imagine like <laughs> talking to your cancer every now and then, Hey, What's up, buddy? You know, just uh, like I've telecommunication done that. or something. I've done you know? that, but to my have immune you actually system, done that? To my immune system. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I did. The, just I did like, like a. It. I did a medi meditative thing where I was just like, like folk. So there's a. This is a. This is a. Um, like a baseline thing. Cold stops immune system. Hot brings your immune system there so that's why some wounds now they change their protocol for it that you don't ice your wound you warm it up because then you bring your immune system there and it and it and then uh, they kill is more it. active yeah so that's what cancer is your immune system isn't there but there's uh, a certain like you know when when it came to radiation and killing it right it's like you know there's some things that you could get into your head about you know it's just kind of like a personal thing anyways but um so that that's the situation of my thing right so my surgeon my first surgeon he was like i you, you don't need surgery he's so confident i don't need surgery he said that in the first year you won't need it ever again i i'm that confident i i did it i took care of it um it's he was confident that i wasn't gonna grow back the only reason why i i, I didn't doubt him but my cancer grew back. My cancer did grow back since him doing the surgery. But after it grew back, I did a bunch of things and they were expecting, he told me that I was gonna need surgery after it grew back. And then I did a bunch of things. That's where my supplement company came into. Like I did all my own things. And then it stopped. After after six months, it stopped growing, stopped in its track. And he's just like, hey, I can't verify, like we can't publish what you did, but like whatever you did, Hey, it went above my expectations for your cancer. I said you were going to get it in six months and it stopped. You don't need it anymore. So I was like, cool. Now, do I need surgery? And he's like, we can hold off. We'll watch every three months. So for the second year, third year, fourth year, the second year, third year, I was watching every like two to three months. Crazy amount. Most thyroid cases are looking every 12 months or six months. I was looking almost every month. That was the, you know, like it, it was a double edged sword because I didn't want to get surgery again. Because if I got surgery again, high chance I could lose my voice. That is why one of the major risks because the, the cancer is right on my vocal cord. Um, so it risk paralysis, par paralyzing my vocal cord. Um, so we, me and him and my oncologist were like, 
We'll play, we'll play, we'll play, you know, part, you believe in yourself, we believe in you, we'll think positive, we'll monitor this, great, you know, let's, uh, let's watch this, uh, thing, we did that, we did that, uh, my, my surgeon, he is old, but somehow he's still the best surgeon, he was, he's supposed to retire at my five-year mark, so I'm, like, his last patient, essentially, and, um, I'm probably his youngest patient also, technically, because I, I know most of his, like, people because in the waiting room uh, um he's the youngest patient and probably his last and he said that before my five-year mark if i wanted to he could do my surgery again and it would be like his last surgery and like you know like we're just talking and he also said that like you might be in a place mentally to want to get surgery and i want you to i want you to know i will do your surgery because I don't trust anybody else to do it. I know what it looks like inside. And I was like, that makes sense. And he's like a god with it. And he's basically said, I don't want a young person to mess up my my work. That's what he said, right? Um, but I got, you know, I got Imagine second Imagine arthritis messes up his. No, he's still so good. He's, he, like, I'm telling you, if you felt this man's hands, he has the, like, it, there's like hockey. There's like a imbuement of like life coming from his something hands something about you and old men just just vibe man like first no Victor I, I just respect and now i just this, respect like... him. you gotta meet him he's so cool but like <laughs> so 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 <laughs> i got invite him to another the one of the best surgeons in the northeast for it as a second opinion and this is the thing with young surgeons they want surgery they want surgery really bad right because like no surgeon no surgeon doesn't want surgery it takes a lot out of them to not want surgery. So if you're operable, then they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah we can do surgery as long as it's safe. You know what I mean? It buffs up their numbers. My surgeon's so decorated. He's like, nah, we don't need to do surgery. We don't need to do surgery there. Right. So not saying that my new surgeon wants to jump into surgery, but he's always keeping surgery on the books. He's like, just, hey, if you ever want it, we could do it. So I'm just like, and he's like, we'll watch. But I keep on telling him, like, if I make it to the five year mark, we're good. Right. And he's like, yeah. And then he's like, but this lymph node, that cancer thing, it, it's in the thing. So I have like one load node wrapping around my artery. And I'm like, but if I make the five year mark, I'm good. I don't need surgery. Right. And he's like, yeah, but like, we could still think about it. So that's where I left off last. He wants that like, paycheck. Yeah. So my last, the fun. my last ultrasound showed that all my lymph nodes shrunk, which is like great, which is like, <laughs> imagine he is, he's upset. He's like, ah, he starts throwing up in the room. No, I mean, so 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 uh, i'm not gonna name names to bring back your cancer. i'm not gonna name names but uh he, you know this is something you can do is that you know there's a margin of error when it comes to ultrasound so it was like hey these are incrementally smaller we don't know how much maybe it was just image error right but they yeah. all shrunk across the board and it's like we could still think about it i'd be so was, mad if i was your surgeon i'd be like what the fuck like, yeah, it's a, I so, hired like 10 voodoo priests to like live in my basement for a week just to curse that cancer back on you. I'd be yeah, like, I was but, supposed to have surgery on this man. What's but going my, on? My opinion is that all this, all my doctors still want to have me as a patient because like I'm like a rare commodity because the time that I got it, I'm a guy with the cancer that I have. And then also like the timeline of everything. Like I chose a very different route all things considered because a lot of people do surgery again which is crazy i hear so many stories of that but um yeah that was the that that the my current mostly health stuff but uh yeah i'm gonna be getting back to the physical stuff you, you know, know boxing all that stuff you know uh, to, to end this off par i gotta say jokes aside i'm glad your cancer is getting better yeah yeah thank you yeah but I, i'm gonna miss wait. being able to meme on you for the cancer though what i mean it's always there you can still meme on i it. can still meme on it i i just love saying my, like, man par has cancer bro He's, uh, so i so i didn't tell my wife what kind of cancer you have but i tell her that you could die any day now <laughs> so <laughs> so i'm like babe like any day now par is gonna pass away <laughs> and it's gonna be so sad like he has a kid a wife and it's man you have no idea what he's I, going through my like, every day he's losing more and more hair like this this man's he's, he's gone dude Yo, and i tell my, my friends wife? that too i'm like i do a podcast with this guy but he has cancer <laughs> like he's god no. like any day now it's gonna become a one-man <laughs> podcast and I, just, I joked about it i was like this man, is a charity this is yeah a it's a charity 
I was like, I was like, one day I'm just gonna pop on the podcast and it's gonna be me and a Ouija board. And every time I make a joke, I'm like, Par, what do you think? And then the Ouija board moves a little bit. Oh my goodness! Like no, I, I, I've been cooking great. up the Par cancer theories on the side. I love I cooking up your cancer, bro. I literally do that with my wife. My wife will be like, um, uh, she she can't win either way. She either says like, oh, you can use the cancer card here, and I'm like. I don't have what do you mean i'm fine what do you babe hello and then when she says like like oh you stop milking not, not milking obviously we're I'm yeah memeing here but she'll be like i was like would you say that to a cancer <laughs> yeah stop milking your cancer <gasps> i have it though it's like me making it it's like how i make a lot of asian jokes it's you can yeah. make cancer jokes now you know yeah you're yeah. like the walter and white of one piece it's so funny because i'm like podcasting. you know uh one of my cousins she got cancer recently and i'm like she, she like i you know she wanted to talk to me because she knew my you should have said welcome to the club family. buddy no that's what i did i said you can oh, use the card now and she <laughs> used it all like we joked about it immediately yeah. i said i said like if they if they say anything to you like at a restaurant just say like how how dare you treat a and then, and like, I was at the table with her and then she's like, we both, there's two of them. You didn't just offend me. You offend, I was like, use my card, use your card, use that all the time. I mean, her, her situation, she should use all the time. Mine, I'm, I'm, I'm past like a certain point, but like, it's still, it's still like, you know, uh, I think a, a good state is when you can laugh about it yourself. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You gotta be able to laugh. Yeah. 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 But um, hey. yeah. Was, so I'll, that's, I'll, uh, I was going to say now we will head out for sure. Sorry. I got to go again. <laughs> Yeah, 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 no, we're good, we're good. I, I think at the beginning of this, I, I teased the IBS and the IBS is kicking in. I gotta go. But, <laughs> no, uh, you but, didn't need to say that. Hey, hey, I, I'm a very, uh, I'm an open guy, you know? It Just is like what it your is. Butthole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the pants browning portion, I guess I should have used for myself. But hey, with that being said, thank you guys for showing up. And also, I just read the comments from the previous videos. Somebody called Par Indian and they called me Vietnamese and I've been I've never been more offended than that. Uh, <laughs> Yo, you guys yes. have a great night. Peace out. Peace.